you know, make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. And that's been important to me mm -hmm. to uh, always be able to say something or do something or be in a position where I could bless somebody with what I have. I'm, I'm reminded so much about Peter um, when he was coming up to the gate called Beautiful. And he met a man who was infirm. Matter of fact, he was a beggar. He had been sick. He had been at that gate every day begging alms. And he asked him for um, some money. Mm -hmm. Peter turned to him and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And that's always stuck with me because there's been so many times when I wanted to do um, things or give something and I didn't have it materialistically mm -hmm. but it's always been that I try to follow that very example that whatever I have give I to you mm -hmm. so either it's been a word from God been a smile been a bit of encouragement anything that I have I want to give it because it's not me it's the God that's in me it's the God that works through me told many people, I'm a conduit. If you don't know what a conduit is, it is a, it, it's a device that uh, is used to carry uh, a substance from one place to another. It in itself has no great intrinsic value outside of being the tool of what carries that instrument or what carries that substance. And that's what I've always tried to make myself realize is that I'm just a conduit of Jesus Christ. My name carries no weight. My name carries no value. You can't take my name and go to the grocery store or take my name <laughs> and go to the electric company and tell them what Malcolm said. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm said. That don't get you nothing. That's right. That's right. But the name of Jesus carries yes. so much. Yes, he does. My Father yes. in heaven uh, has all the authority and he's been granted that as well. So that wherever we go, whatever we we're able to operate fully in the spirit of God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. So uh, that's what I am, and that's what I do. And I thank God that he's blessed us to have this home to uh, open it up. We've always had an opportunity to open it up. We've always had people in here. Uh, but he's told us to go you know, a little bit further, step out into the deep a little bit more, mm -hmm. do a little bit more of what I called you to do. So that's what we're doing. So we thank God for everybody that comes in here. Seems like every week we got different faces. <laughs> we've, been, we've been given the word that we've been given, you know, and I praise God that, you know, the word that he's giving uh, is blessing people. And I wanted to do that. Uh, not my word, but God's word. Okay? You ready? You're already on. I'm already on. That's all right. That's all right. See, I learned how to edit. See, so it's cool, you know. I'm getting better with this, you know, so I can edit out some certain things. But uh, if not, still, God is still good, and His Word is still good. So Father, we thank you for this time. 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 Thank you Thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. you for this time. Thank this opportunity that we have to come before your throne to give your word, Father, that you've given unto us to bless your people, Father, to encourage them to continue to walk upright and holy before you, Father. I thank you, Father, for the, the season that we are in, Father, to give you glory and praise, Father. All our heaven is rejoicing as we continue to go forward, knowing that the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ has helped usher in, Father, our salvation mm -hmm. and our right to the kingdom of God. Bless us, Father, to grow stronger in you, prepare to do your will and your work. Go forward and bless those, O oh God, who hunger and thirst after your righteousness and the things of We'll give you glory and honor and praise in all we do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, been very interesting. Uh, he gave me a series. Um, and it started out dealing with, and we're still dealing with the five senses that God has given into man. Um, the first that we deal with, and the five senses are sight, touch, smell, taste, and hearing. God gave man these senses so that we can have uh, 
and understand our relationship with God who created us in his image. So see, one thing God even spoke to me this morning is like, well, you know, if I gave you five senses and I created you in my image, and that means I got five senses too. Of course, I got more than you do. That's God speaking. But the five that he's given you for you to have that relationship with him, he wants you to utilize them. I heard something on the news the other day, and it just, I, I, I had to chuckle because I've said it uh, uh, quite often and a lot recently because uh, a lot of people get it wrong. And I will ask you the same question. Uh, our brains, how, what is the percentage of our brains that we use? Did somebody tell me? They say 10%. 10%? Everybody agree with that? Fifty percent. Everybody agree with that? Wrong. <laughs> we use one hundred percent of our brain. Really? One hundred percent of your brain is used. Now you are cognizant of only a certain portion of it, but every bit of your brain is used. Okay. For your uh, for those uh, uh, automatic responses. That's right. Anything that you do, the things that you are aware of, the things you're not aware of, your brain 100% is used. And I heard somebody say that on the news the other day, and I'm like, oh, so they finally starting to, to realize and to acknowledge that what God created, he didn't create something in us that was not to be used. He didn't create us a, 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 a faulty. 100% of your brain is used. Now, as we can see, when we look at some of the dumb criminals on TV, <laughs> maybe they don't use as much of the percentage that they ought to use. Yeah. <laughs> but it is used. Yeah. And God wants you to understand and realize that the relationship that he wants you to have with him, he wants you to be optimal. Every bit of what he's given you, he wants you to use in your relationship with him. So we dealt with, we've dealt with hearing, and we've dealt with touch. Today, God really blesses this is a good one here, is to taste the goodness of the Lord. Taste the goodness of the Lord. Got to think about taste. And you know me, I'm gonna, always going to look up a word. If I hear a word or something, I don't want to give you what I think. I'm going to give you what is being written about. Then I'll give you my opinion. But when I looked up taste, it says to become acquainted with by experience. Oh, that was really strange. Okay. But it says to test the flavor of something by taking a small part into the mouth. To have perception, experience, or enjoyment. That's taste. Okay. The sense of taste can only be accessed through the mouth, especially the tongue. Now, that's so interesting. So I'm like, okay, Lord, that means that my mouth is very important in what I do as far as how I sense you. The sweetness, the goodness of what you've placed in me. It says your taste buds can recognize four basic kinds of taste. Okay? Sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Those are the four types basic types of taste. The salt, sweet taste buds are located near the front of the tongue. The sour taste buds line the sides of your tongue. You ever hit, you get something real sour and it's mm -hmm. like you feel it in yeah. your jowls? Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. That gets me, boy. It just... mm -hmm. That's where they're located on the sides of the tongue. And the bitter taste buds are found in the very back of your tongue. So all of your tongue, that's how you are able to distinguish different flavors and taste that is in your mouth. What's the scripture that says, my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have opportunity through your tongue to receive and to know and taste the goodness of God. And I couldn't, I, it just, that just messed with me. But then I got to thinking about, you know, I looked at a child's face. Uh, Maxwell was just here this uh, next week. Had a little child here last 
Sunday. Oh, boy. And I loved watching the little kids when they taste their first experience of tasting something that is new to them. You know? Uh, 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 they'll either mm, lift it up or don't. You know, especially little babies, you get that little, that, <laughs> that, that, that nose, that, 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 that crinkleness, you know. But that's their experiencing their first taste. Mm -hmm. Our own expressions, when we're experiencing something that doesn't agree with us. Uh, 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 I went to, in the Philippines, uh, it was so, I, I, I enjoyed myself whenever I went. And one of the things that I always said was, I always wanted to try something different each time I went. I wanted to eat something I hadn't eaten before. See how they don't do that. Yeah, I, I was I'm like, what's in that? <laughs> See, I was a bold kind of person. And I would tell them, don't tell me what it is. Let me eat it first. If I like it, then you can tell me. And even if it's weird, if I like it, I'll eat it again. Don't matter. But if I don't like it, please tell me. So now I know not to order it again. And we all went out to this restaurant, beautiful place, and they ordered me this soup. And as always, I'm like, don't tell me what it is. And the first spoonful I put in my mouth, I think this was the most sour thing I've ever put in my mouth. It's like the insides of my mouth touched. You know, you ever had alum or something? You know, it's, that, it's that sour. It just, and, and, I, and I know they looked at the expression on my face and they were cracking up, you know, because it's like, Oh, man, I've never had anything that sour in my life. So the expression, even on your face when you do something, when you taste something, it can uh, express how you feel. Mm -hmm. I remember when God saved me. And uh, I'm in my bathroom. Uh, and the joy of the Lord hit me so tough. And I got into a place where all I could do was laugh possibly maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And it wasn't just a laugh laugh. It was one of them belly roll laughs. I mean, the kids, as a matter of fact, it was, it was a snow day. You weren't here. I don't think you were here. But it was a snow day. So the kids were out of school. They were down in the basement. And they had to come up and knock on the door because I'm in the bathroom because they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but it was just that joy that God had hit me with so tough then I know the smile on my face could not be erased. The, the, the freedom of what God did for me when he released me, the, the, the sweetness of his spirit that encapsulated me, blessed me beyond anything I could ever imagine. And since that day, I've enjoyed the taste of the goodness of the Lord. It's tasted so good. It's tasted so sweet. It's been a blessing. Every time I've eaten his word, every time... I put his joy in my mouth every time I've just salivated on knowing the things that he's blessing us with and where he's taking us. It's just nothing but sweetness. It's nothing but goodness. It's nothing but the greatness of the Lord. So turn with me, if you will, right now to Psalms, the 34th chapter. Psalms 34. First verse, Psalms 34. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Okay. We're going to begin reading at the first verse. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its bull boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Pay attention to verse 4, please. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Pay attention to verse 6. 
The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivers them. Verse 8. All taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I'll repeat verse 8. All taste and see that the Lord he is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Praise God for his word. I was uh, studying and reading about David. And this is during a time uh, when uh, David uh, had been running from King Saul. Saul uh, had been seeking to kill David. David had escaped uh, to a cave uh, in Adullam. And it was during this time of being in this cave, all the times that David had uh, escaped or had come very close to being captured and killed by Saul, God always intervened and always blessed him. Here's the time he's hiding out in the cave. There, there, his men are talking about, well, you know, we want to get your family. We want your family to come. You know, we want everybody that that that, uh, that knows you and knows how good you know you've been, even the King Saul, to come and to rally around you and to bless you. David knew that he could not have that because if they had to come, maybe they would become uh, a part of the captivity as well. Uh, so David, in all of the time that he did, he began to praise God and see how God has blessed him. He saw how God had dispatched the angels uh, to protect him, to minister to him. Uh, even when he had gone uh, and had uh, went to one of the other kings and he had to feign uh, madness. You know, he had to act like he was, uh, he was insane because he feared that even that king would turn him over to Saul. David always had an opportunity to be turned over, but God always blessed him and gave him opportunity to escape because God had a plan for David. And God always wanted David to understand and know that he was going to bless him and keep him and put him in a place of authority. Psalms 119 verses 100 through 103. Psalm 119. Verses 100 through 103. And I'm going to go ahead and read. Uh, it says, I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. God's word is better than the sweetest chocolate. It's better than the most tender prime rib. It's juicier than the ripest navel, angel, now, uh, uh, navel orange. Like I'm looking at what time it is now. The buffet ain't open yet. <laughs> See, I'm saying this thing so I know y'all getting hungry. You yeah, ain't already had breakfast. <laughs> you know, so forgive me for stoking uh, your desire for the natural food. This <laughs> but as I get to thinking about God's word, and in, res in, in retrospect to how we eat our natural food, something about when you're in that time of reading God's word, it fills you. It takes that void. It blesses you. It is sweet to the taste. Mm. It will give you the strength that you need. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto mm. my pathway. It is the bread of life. Mm. It gives you what you need every day to sustain you and to give you opportunity to be strong and courageous. Jo uh, uh, Jer uh, Joshua uh, 1 and 8 says, This book of the law 
shall not depart out of thy mouth, but therein shalt thou meditate both, both day, day and night, that you may, may observe to do all that's written therein. therein. Then shalt thou make thy way prosperous. Then you shalt thou have, have good, good success. success. See, God's word has got to uh, remain in you. It's got to feed you. Three specific times he told Joshua, be thou strong and courageous. Three separate times he told them, keep this word in your mouth. Meditate on it. Chew on it. Masticate on it. Chew it like a cow chews a cud. He puts it down in there, but then when it comes time for him to bring it back up, he'll bring it back up. Chew on it again. Put it back down. Bring it back up. That sounds kind of gross. Yeah. But think about what you yes. need to do with God's word. Yes. You put it in you. Yes. But just when you need it, you need to pull it back up. That's right. yeah. You need to chew on it some more. Mm -hmm. Get that good juice out of it. Yes. Get that good flavor out of it. Worst thing you can have is a piece of good bubble gum or a piece of good gum that you chew on. Tastes real good when you put it in. But give it about a half an hour, the flavor's gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. All you're doing is just chewing, chewing. rubber. Yes, That's it. But see, God's word, my goodness gracious, it never loses its flavor. It never loses its consistency. It will continue to give you what you need. It will always taste good. Even the parts when God is trying to discipline you, it's yes. still going to be good for you. Yes. Yes. It's yes. going to be good for you. Yes. See, God doesn't discipline you because he doesn't like you. He disciplines you because he loves you. That's right. okay. He gives you a word. You may not want to do it. You may not like it. Hey, I'm here to tell you, it's good for you. Mary Poppins had a song. A spoonful of sugar Just a spoonful helps the medicine go down. <laughs> See, now, even when God gives you his word of discipline, he'll still turn around and let you know it's still for your good. That's right. It's to bless you. That's right. It's to keep you. We've, we all have had to discipline our children. Our children have always... And we'll continue to maybe do things that are not according to our rules and our regulations in our household. Mm. Your job as a parent is to discipline or put them on the right pathway through correction. Mm. See, the problem is, is we use punishment the wrong way. See, we want to do it when we're mad, when we're angry. We want to cuss them out. We want to knock them in the head. We want to flip them around. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I confess. Uh -huh, that's, right. that's an apology, Sean. <laughs> it's on take two, so I have yeah. one. <laughs> but I learned some of that stuff don't do no good. You're not doing it with love, with the correction, with the ability to bless them so that they'll turn out the way you want to. Our penal institutions used to be called correctional facilities. Yes. Yeah. It's not no a correctional correction. facility. No. No. It's not meant to correct your behavior. No. It's meant to just corral you to keep you away from the other people in the world. That's right. That's true. God wants you That's to true. be corrected. Yeah. So that even That's when true. it don't taste good, it's still good for you. Turn with me to John, the fourth chapter. Verses 1 through 13. John 4. It says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. 
For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are greater, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. See, she's looking at the natural. Jesus being a man of flesh and blood used an opportunity to bring about a dual teaching opportunity. I'm sure he was naturally thirsty. Because he had to bypass the shortcut or the direct route and go around the bow way because he knew, because he spent time with the Father, he was going to come in contact with a person who needed more than just the physical, also needed the spiritual. God does that with us all the time. We'll look at an opportunity and we think it's all about us. We think it's all about something that is going to directly impact the way we go. And God's letting us know, hey, I got more than just about you. Exactly. I want you to see the greatness of the glory of my word. How it's going to impact not just you, but everybody around you. Jesus came to her at the well. Give me something to drink. See, think about it. He asked her for something to drink. Meaning he was thirsty. But he used that opportunity to introduce her to a living water. Mm. Something that was going to sustain her. Go far beyond just that that would quench her. Her natural thirst. When you continue to read on about this story, once he gave her what she needed, she goes back. And she tells the village. The party said, come see a man who told me about everything I ever did. He told her about how she was, uh, had, married, had, had been with so many men, and the man she was with right now wasn't even her husband. How he, how, how? And I could certainly think with her or something like, how do you know that? I'm a Samaritan. He don't, he don't know where I live. But he told her all about her life. Becoming very introspective. God's telling you about your life. Mm. He wants you to know and understand. That no matter what you do, no matter where you go, he sees everything in your life. He hears every word that you speak. He knows every thought that you have. And he still wants to give you a living water. See, because a lot of our speech ain't right. Our thoughts ain't right. Our walk ain't right. It's things we do that every day you best be saying, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. That's right. That's right. Don't think I don't. Because I have to, too. Because my thoughts aren't always 100% pure. I can think of things I can do to people sometimes. Mm. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I tell you, I, you know, you know me. I'm gonna tell it like it is. I, right. I, 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 I have had, and I'm still working on my road rage problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, Lord, help me, help me, Father. Give me that living water. Quench my thirst. Cool me off. <laughs> Bless me, Lord. Because I know if it was just in the flesh, woo, if I only had a ray gun, 
But I need that living water. I need that thing that's going to sustain me and keep me going. Oh, my goodness. You'll never go hungry or thirsty when you die upon the word of God. You'll never go hungry. You'll never be thirsty when you die upon the word of God. In Hebrews 6, 4 through 6, and this is, I'm going to read it out of the message. Because I like how the message put it. Since once people have seen the light, gotten a taste of heaven, and been part of the work of the Holy Spirit, once they personally experience the sheer goodness of God's word and the powers breaking in on us, if they turn their backs on it, wash their hands of the whole thing, well, they can't start over as if nothing happened. Mm. That's impossible. Why, they're re-crucified Jesus. They've repudiated him in public. Mm. That's why David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he's good. Yes. Yes. So you can't just smell him. You got to taste him. That's right. There's nothing like that Thanksgiving morning. Mm. Mm. You know that bird been cooking in the oven all night long? Or uh, uh, dressing is going and Especially if you're going over to somebody's house and you open up that door and you just walk in. Yes. <sighs> yes. Smell that food. Yes. But that's only one of the senses. See, you can smell. Who, who, who wants to come in and sit down and say, just let me smell? Yeah. Oh, I'm full. I oh, I'm full. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to get two plates. And you're going to taste. <laughs> Tear it up. Because you've got to put it in your mouth. David said, oh, taste and see yeah. that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. you got to taste the goodness of God. Yes, yes. God is standing here ready for you to get a piece of him. Yes. So that he can bless you and fill you to the mm. overflow. Every single day, you need to be eating on God. Yes. 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 Every single day, mm. you need to put him in your mouth. Oh, Glory be to God. Every single day, you need to digest him. Yes. So that you have the power and the strength to pull through every bit of life situation. Because it's coming at you. Nationwide did a, did, did a, and has, a, has a commercial. Life comes at you fast. Mm. And it does. It does. Yes. And if you're not strong and courageous yes. and ready to meet the day's challenges, yes. you're going to find yourself in a bad situation. Yes. And the only way to be prepared, having one of that full armor of God, mm. is to eat of God's word and be prepared so that you can be prosperous and successful. Don't let God's word be void in your life. Mm. Eat of God. Yeah. Bless him. Taste and see mm. that he is good. And he'll give you a promise. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be there for you. I'll guide you everywhere you need to go. I'll be beside you when you're in the midst of your troubles. I'll tell you which way to go. When you yes. want to go left and I need you to go right, I'm going to tell you, go right, yes, son. Lord. When you need to go up and you really need to sit down, you hear, son, sit down for a moment. Sit down. You don't need to go anywhere right now. You just need to sit down. Let me minister to you. Let me talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Let me lead and guide you in the yeah. way you need to go. Mm. Right. Get your trip tick from God. That's yeah. right. He's yeah. going to know every pothole. He's going to know every detour. Yes. He's going to know every, every 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 lodging you need to stay in. He's going to tell you every gas station you need to get filled up on. Get your direction from God so that yes. he can tell you where you need to go and how to get there. That's right. Yeah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste the goodness of the Lord. Mm. Let him bless you. Yes. 